In today's Legacy gameplay video, you're going to see me harness the power of Jeweled Lotus in Legacy to shoot my opponent for over 400 damage. I'm also going to race against the clock because I am too slow at playing this fucking game. All that and more coming up. <laughs> Fucking boom! Headshot. Now I've got to try and win in six minutes for the next round. This video and all videos on the channel are now brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc. So if you're looking to pick up seal product, uh, magic singles, other hobby games, tabletop card games, and board games, and all that stuff, use the code Kenobi at checkout for five percent off your next order. And to help support the channel, link in the description below. The question I'm here to answer today is: Jeweled Lotus playable in Legacy. A car that made the commander community melt down, ask for preemptive bans, and just act like fucking children. <laughs> Which honestly is most cards when it comes to commander. Today's deck is that I've played on the channel before. I, I was brought to my attention by Bosch and Vol, and had, I think, one good finish by another player. I'll put the name on screen now, so I have to dig into my notes. This is Run the Jewels. Essentially, it's a deck using Jeweled Lotus and other uh, cost reducers and artifact mana to try and play your whole hand out very quickly and use Dublin Cube to double the mana from Jeweled Lotus. I'll explain more on that in a moment because that probably sounds like it doesn't work and it does. Kinda. This is our opening hand, Triple Calm with a load of artifacts. This is rubbish. We're going to be looking. This has uh, two lands. Grim Monolith and Khan. I think I keep this. I'm going to keep this and bot on the other land. I'm not really good with this deck, so I could just fumble my way through this. But let's see how it goes. Our opponent's also mulligan to six, but they are on the play. So we're effectively one card up, even if we're going a little bit slower. They play a basic planes, which suggests they might be on DNT or Bomberman, potentially. Um, probably more DNT. Or maybe Blue White Control. I hope it's DNT because then we get to have a turn of doing crazy shit. Okay, we're going to start with the City of Traitors. We're going to tap the City of Traitors for two mana. And we're going to cast a Grim Monolith. The Grim Monolith resolve because they are tapped out. We're going to make three mana now. We're going to cast a Helm of Awakening for two mana. This will make all spells cost one less. All spells generically. So Mana for Key is now free. This Petal is now free. It was free before. The Chromatic Star is also free. And then I'm going to use the one mana in my pool to untap this Grim Monolith. And then we're going to make three more mana to make a Khan. Because it's only three mana thanks to Helm of Awakening. Now the question is, is it worth getting something with Khan here? I could crack my petal to crack my star to draw a singular card and make a mana. But, and then if I get a mana for key off my Khan, I can then use the mana for key to untap my little grim monolith and so on and so on. But, ah, I kind of wish we had a workshop in our sideboard, but we don't. I'm going to down tick the Khan in case they play Revoker. And we're going to grab a... I guess an Aetherflux Reservoir here, so every spell that we cast is going to net us some life and that's in play, and it's one of our wing cons. Our opponent plays a one mana Thalia Guardian of Thraben, which undoes a lot of what my Helm of Awakening did. Play a Wasteland, and they're going to blow up my City of Traitors. Seems dece. We drew another land because I'm really good at this game. I play an Ancient Tomb, we're going to use the Ancient Tomb to untap our monolith with our manifold key. And then we're going to tap it th for three more mana. We now have four mana in the pool. I'm going to down tick my Khan again. I'm going to go and grab a walking ballista from the board. Walking ballista still costs one less because of the Helm Awakening. Uh, the Thalia doesn't tax creatures. So for that reason, we're going to have five mana with this petal. And I'm going to go ahead and crack the star. We'll do another manifold key. Which nets us one whole more mana, but that doesn't do a whole lot. So I'm just going to cast the Walking Ballista for X equals 3 on both sides. Obviously, I've spent 5 mana on it, but it's produced by 1 by Helm Awakening. Now I'm going to remove a counter, kill the Thalia, and then we're going to just cast one more <laughs> one more Manifold key. And we pass back to our opponent. We now have a Walking Ballista on 2, which allows us to kill another Thalia, for example. Whilst we wait on our opponent here to explain... So the two core things of this deck that you need to understand is that Jeweled Lotus creates mana for commanders. But when you double it with Doubling Cube, you actually get mana back. You get 3 extra mana off of uh, <laughs> off the doubling cubes and then beyond that also we're playing echo of aeons which allows us to rotate to our deck multiple times when and if we draw it our opponent cast a stoneforge mystic and a mother of runes this turn so we're going to go and get a battle skull any other equipment is bad oh caldra's fine too because uh, khan turns off most equipment uh so they want one that has living weapon attached to it they got caldra complete so we're going to see a caldra complete next turn Ooh, that's a good one. The other option is to not kill the Mother of Runes and kill the Stoneforge and then the Caldra stuck in their hand, which might be what we do. We untap and we draw a Lion's Eye Diamond. So we're going to play it. I'm then going to make two mana. I'm going to untap this Grim Monolith for one mana. I'm going to make three mana. I'm then going to untap this Grim Monolith for one mana. And guess what? I'm going to tap it for another three mana. We've got six mana in our pool now. I'm going to put another counter on the Walking Ballista for four mana. I'm going to... Kill the um, Stoneforge Mystic. I'm going to keep the counter on the 
on the walking blister for this mother of runes for next turn. We're going to tick up Khan, but we're going to say no bodies here. That way, if they attack with a mum, I guess we could block it. That I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have made the Helm of Awakening to a body there. I just don't want it to be plowshareable. You know, I don't want the plowshares my Helm of Awakening. They play a Caracas, and they play a Palace Jailer. Interesting. We're going to lose our Walking Ballista here. We're going to kill the Mother of Runes. Doesn't mean they're the Monarch now, though, so they get to, like, draw a card every single turn. And they have a 2-2. We draw Mox Opal, so we're going to make two mana. And tap Grim with a Manifold Key. Tap it for three. With that three that four mana we're going to play aether flux reservoir we're going to cast a mox opal which will gain us a life we're then going to uptick on Khan to keep aether flux reservoir as a body to be able to block this palace jailer and that's kind of it they can obviously plow shares our aether flux reservoir here then hit our Khan, and then we'll be in trouble what they're staring down now is a blocker evidently if they were to be able to get through they'd be fine but if they can't and i can block this palace jail and they just deploy another threat for example like a stoneforge mystical Athalia, we may well just be able to microsynth lattice them next turn which makes all their permanents uh become artifacts and untappable so it's not that mana however with two bodies they could attack into the Khan. So actually, we can't last them now because we still need a blocker against that Thali. We drew another Manifold Key. So I'm going to minus two my Khan here. And I'm going to grab an Ensnaring Bridge. They just can't attack me. They can if they play a Wisp. Though. I'm going to make two mana. I'm going to untap my Grim Modeler. I'm going to play the Manifold Key for the one mana because Thali makes it cost one in addition to the Helm making it cost zero. Make three mana. Untap my Grim Monolith. Pay the one make three more mana so we're now on five mana at this point make an ensnaring bridge we gain another two life and then we use the final key again just to untap the grim ready for next turn and then we're going to pass back to our opponent so we've stopped them from attacking us <laughs> but they are drawing multiple cards a turn a flicker wisp will turn our bridge off which basically loses us the game on the spot almost we're not in the best of spots. Play Umazawa's Jitte, which doesn't equip to anything and can't do anything because it can't attack. So that's good. They draw another card up to four cards in hand. We draw a Chromatic Sphere, which we're going to play. We're going to crack it, making a blue, and draw a card. And we found a Jeweled Lotus, which we're going to play just to buffer our life total. We're going to untie up our Grim Monolith. Then we're going to take up our card. I'm going to make my helm into a creature here, just so we can trade with the Palace Jailer if they manage to get rid of our... Would have always known, but then they'll be attacked with Umazawa's always Jitte as well, and that would be bad for us. Next turn, we can Khan lock. Next turn, we can Khan lock them. Stoneforge Mystic for one mana. They can now make a Caldra complete next turn, but again, it doesn't do a lot into Ensnaring Bridge. What they really, really need is a Wisp or some sort of mainboard disenchant style effect. They can't attack because of the bridge. They draw another card off of the Monarch. They didn't grab. Oh, they grabbed Battaskull of Stone Force. They have six cards in hand. One is Caldra complete, one is Battaskull. We draw another Helm of Awakening, which we will cast here. We're going to stop them from being able to play any spells now. So we're going to go and grab a Mycosynth Lattice. We're going to make three mana. We're going to untap it. We're going to make three more mana and untap it. We'll get three more mana and untap it. And I've just realized we don't have a Khan in play. I was meant to tick up for one more turn. <laughs> Oh, shit. I've, I've fucked that real bad. Listen, I don't know what you got going up up here, but this cannot be fixed by human hands. Who the fuck did this? Oh, my God. That's... So what I've done here is turn everything into artifacts with the purpose of... <laughs> <laughs> with the purpose of uh, turning all their lands into unplayable bricks. There'll be artifacts that can't be activated. I forgot my car. <laughs> I forgot my car would be in the bin if I down ticked it. So they haven't got a lot to do here, but one wisp leaves us dead. And they're on eight cards in hand at this point. I need to draw a Khan or an Echo or something. We draw an Echo. Okay. I'm going to make three blue mana with my Lion's Eye Diamond. This will make our bridge real bad, but I'm sure I can cast almost everything we draw. I'm then going to go ahead and activate Grim Monolith. I'm then going to untap the Grim Monolith. And I'm going to use one colorless mana to do so. I'm then going to cast Echo Rayons for three mana, which is blue and one. Well, it's actually not for three mana. It's for two mana. Uh, the reason being 
is that we've got two helms in play. And Thalia has increased it by one, and we're increasing it by two. So we're going to gain a life, and we're going to draw seven cards. So is up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There's a lot of magic cards here that we can cast and do things with. So we're going to go Crystal Vein. And we're going to go ahead and play. I'm going to go ahead and, like, untap my monolith a few times, actually, first. They've drawn seven cards, and they're pausing there. So what do they have? What do they have to interact with us at this stage in the game? Do they have Disenchant main deck? Do they have the Flash creature that sacks itself? The Blop and Artifact main deck? Okay, nothing. We're going to make some more mana. God, they made me clench. And then we're not going to untap now. We wanna, might want to untap our Mystic Forge, you see. So now we're going to play Mystic Forge. We gain life equal to the number of spells cast this turn. Again, off a flux as well, going to 24. If you just play Khan, they probably scoop. But we don't want to do that. We're going to play Chromax Fit. And we gain some life. When it comes to play, it's free, obviously. We're going to cast Lion's Eye Diamond, which was also free. How much life do we need for Death Star again? 50. Okay. Uh, we're going to activate our Forge to X our top card because it's a land and we don't want it. We find a Grim Monolith, which costs us one whole mana. But Nez is three. So we're going to play that as well. We're kind of popping off here. So here comes the Grim Monolith. We're going to tap that Grim Monolith. And then we're going to play this Doubling Cube off the top for one mana. Okay. There we go. Doubling Cube into play. Now we get to double mana off the. Okay, so we're going to go Jeweled Lotus, making a load of blue. Well, they're going to make a load of colorless here. And we're going to make some more colorless there. We're then going to go ahead and play a Chromatic Star for free, which gains us another load of life. It gets us to dig through this Echo Veil on top of our library as well. It's, kind of, I'm, I'm, it's so crazy we're doing this through Athalia. I, I kind of both love it and hate it. Uh, if you've watched the channel long enough, you know, you'll know that I'm normally the one playing Thalia's. We're going to crack that star, draw that Echo. Uh, we find a Voltaic Key, which will just cast to the top. Plus to enough life for a Death Star activation. I'm going to keep going for a small amount of time. I don't mind about timing out here. So there's an ancient tomb on top. We're gonna draw that with this chromatic sphere, making another blue. Okay, on top of the green modern, we're gonna cast that as well. We're now on 63 life. We can't draw any more cards on top of our library. We're gonna cast this doubling cube. Bear in mind we've got three mana for commander in our pool right now. We're gonna make three. We're gonna untap this. We're gonna make three more. We're gonna go ahead and make a blue here as well. And then we're gonna activate the doubling cube. Watch me get just extra mana from this three here. It becomes three of any color. There you go. See, 30 there, and then we're going to double in cube again. See? 29 mana! We never double the three into your commander. That's always stays as just three. Uh, what do we want to do now? What do you want to do now? Guess I should cast that combo. They'll scoop if I do that. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they want me to time out, and I'm fine with that. I'm having fun. Uh, we cast a card and get to 84. Maybe I want to kill all their creatures with the Aether Flux, then them. That would be pretty fun. Let's go ahead and cast Echo Veyance. Uh, so one blue and two colorless. Shuffle our graveyard and library together and draw seven cards. 196 now. Echo of Aeons draws back up to 7. We've got an Alliance of Diamond to get around fucking up with the bridge. We're going to cast a Mox Opal. Mox Opal comes into play. We're going to keep the ones untapped. We're going to make another blue mana. We're going to cast a Lotus Petal. Uh, okay. And we're going to cast a Mystic Forge. And another Mystic Forge. And a Doubling Cube. We're going to make some blue. That's it. So we're now going to activate Doubling Cube. And then we're going to untap the Doubling Cube. We're going to activate Doubling Cube. We have 125 blue mana in our... <laughs> Cool. We're going to cast a Chromatic Sphere. We're on 189. Uh, activate Mystic Forge. Get the thing off the top of our library. Play the Petal. Cool. Play the Ballista for one. 227 life. We can now go pay 50 life, shoot Thalia. Pay 50 life, shoot Stoneforge. Pay 50 life, shoot Palagilla. Play Echo Veyance to draw more cards. Shuffle back in. Draw seven more. Here we go. Petal. Petal. Chromatic Star. Echo Veyance. Mox Opal. Mox Opal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mesmeric Orb. Khan the Great Creator. Cast Khan the Great Creator off the top of our library. Cast a key. Cast a key. Cast a key. Okay, I got bored now. Welcome to fucking. So we're gonna hold control. We're gonna pay 50 life and shoot them. We're gonna pay 50 life and shoot them. We're gonna pay 50 life and shoot them. Is this bad manners? I hope they know I'm doing this for a video. Uh, pay 50 life and shoot them. Pay 50 life and shoot them. Uh, pay 50 life and shoot them. Uh, pay 50 life and shoot them. Pay 50 life and shoot them. And I'll do it one more time. Pay 50 life and shoot them. So on the stack right now we have 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450 damage on the stack. Holy uh, <laughs> Fucking boom! Headshot. Now I've got to try and win in six minutes for the next round. But I don't give a fuck. I've done what I came here to do, and that's the main thing. So we mulligan this, we mulligan this, and then I was considering keeping just a simple um, Lions of Diamond plus Aeon, but I think Helm of Awakening plus two mana land or soul land is good. They, they play Deafening Silence, which is something that we have Chain of Vapor for, uh, <laughs> but this is a problem for us. And we draw Chain of Vapor. So we're leading with Grim Monolith, they're going with Stoneforge Mystic. No Thalia from them early, which is good. Next turn, I don't know, what do we want to see? A blue source, perhaps? Even a Mox Opal, we can't actually cast it. They put Caldra Complete into their hand, which is a, a big problem for us. I think we're going to time out. <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
I think we're gonna time out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and I tap the Ancient Tomb to play five mana. How oh, we can't go Helm into 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 Mystic Forge? Oh no! Okay, we're gonna go in Mystic Forge then. Uh, it allows us to set up our draws next turn. It does fuck our mana a little bit. I think I've just basically lost. Uh, we don't want to draw that Jeweled Lotus. Uh, Lions of Diamond, we're happy to draw. Although that said, we can't play it and play Deafening Science. So we're going to get Cowdred in the face. Um, and I don't know how we stop that. So the Mulligan <laughs> into them playing Deafening Science was brutal. We're going to get five or seven or some shit. What is it? I forget what it is. It's five. It's seven mana to equip, seven mana to play, five to hit. So we take five here. And then we want to, like, draw an island before we die. So we draw the Lion's Eye Diamond. The top card of our deck is not a blue source, but it is a Khan. Now, we can't play the Khan without using Lion's Eye Diamond to ditch our hand. And we can't play Lion's Eye Diamond and the Khan. And we can't play the Star with the Ancient Tomb and then Chain of Vapor the Deafening Sound, as you see. So I'm going to play two life, play a Chromatic Star here. And next time I'm going to Chain of Vapor that Deafening Silence and hope it gets us there. Now, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't exactly know how that's going to work. We're going to take five here, maybe even six. Um, taking six will be very bad. Oh, they played a Russian Port. Okay. Well, fuck. Thalia as well. Okay. Wow. Well, at least when they port us, we can use the star to get rid of the deafening silence and see if we can get someone with whatever's off the top of our deck, which we probably can't. We've got Lion's Eye Diamond to Echo, though. No, we haven't because of the Thalia. Oh, boy. That Thalia made any chance of us winning on this turn. Impossible. We're going to let us untap, though. We're going to port us. Of course, we're going to pay two life and die. Cool. Let's go to game three. <laughs> well, on the play, our hand looks a little bit like this. Ah, uh, that is not good. This, on the other hand, this, on the other hand, is fine. It's not exciting, but it's fine. I put the manifold key back, because you just want to cast Echo on turn two if we can. And we're going to go... Part of me wants to leave the City of Traders so they don't wasteland us, because City of Traders is something that people don't tend to wasteland too much. But we're going to go Ancient Tomb. We're going to go Mesmeric Orb. We're going to go Mox Opal. We're going to go Lotus Petal. And now, when we untap, if we mill on... Uh, echo off this. We are laughing. Although we can just play another land and play an Echo. So they didn't they didn't waste on us. They played Deafening Silence. Okay. We now need to find Chain of Vapor. Please don't mill it with the Mesmeric Orb. That'd be nice. So Orb sets stuff up and I've been like Grim Monday. We're then going to draw the take key. We're going to play City of Traders. And we're going to go blue. Oh, undo that. Jesus Christ. If it's, do your sequencing right. Blue. Blue. Colorless and colorless. This might even fuck their hand, honestly. We're going to Echo Veons. And we found a Chain of Vapor, which we can cast off the Opal. Uh, again, awkwardly in their turn <laughs> because of the uh <laughs> the way uh deafening silence fucks us so bad they play a and port we don't care about that we mill three things into the bin doop doop and doop not an echo though oh no we did hit echoes they port us which is fine we play a grim monolith and pass the turn back to our opponent we're gonna chain of vapor them in their turn off of our mox opal mind break trap they brought in fuck that does make a lot of sense to be fair we have less than two minutes to kill them here it's tap out for a recruit of the guard and this is very good for us we find so forge we make a blue and we chain a vapor the deafening silence yeah think about sacking a land here to bounce one of our things now the great thing about our echo here is that we're going to be able to echo their shit out of their hands the deafening silence will be gone back into their deck they obviously redraw it with seven cards but yeah what can you do they did not bounce anything which is great for us Okay, time for some fucking speed play, everybody. We're gonna untap. There's Maricorp's gonna trigger and mill a load of shit. We're gonna go to our main phase. We're gonna draw a Mox Opal. We're gonna make a blue mana here, play the other Mox Opal. Keeping this one. We're gonna ditch the... Uh, not ditch, we're gonna play Lion's Eye Diamond. We're gonna tap for two here, play a Grim Monolith. We're gonna tap for three and play another Grim Monolith. We're gonna play a Manifold Key. We're then gonna go ahead and make three... Untap a Monolith. Make three, make three... Play a Mystic Forge, play a Lion's Eye Diamond, play a Helm of Awakening, find an Ancient Tomb on top, and we're going to stop there. We're going to go blue, blue, and that's it. And then we're going to Echo of Aeons. We need a Khan here. We find a Khan. We're going to go Lion's Eye Diamond. We should be casting things, actually. We should be Khaning first. We're going to Khan first. Down, tick the Khan. Grab the Aether Flux Reservoir. I am against the clock here. Yes. Reservoir. Then we're going to go ahead and play the Reservoir for its three mana. We're going to go Petal. Always yield. Voltaic Key. I mean, they're dead on board. They should probably scoop, but they're not going to. Tap for two. Monolith. 15 seconds on clock. We got there, chat. Comment section. We got there. 50 life. Shoot them in the face. Pass priority. 11 seconds on the clock. Doomsday fucking arc. Death Star. Fucking gunshot to the face. This deck is so fucking funny. It's so shit, but it is so funny to shoot people in the face. <laughs> 
Fucking, oh, I'm damning on the haters. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. The deck list is in the description below. Do not try and play as that GP when they come back. Do not buy into this thing as the next meta thing. But have fun with it. If you've got a rental account, if you're going to go use a card hoarder, which is where I get all my rental cards from, uh, then give this a go. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take heads and I'll see you soon. Ta-ta for now.